One thing I've always been proud of my career is I don't think anyone's going to outwork me when I'm at the field because you never know. Broxton tags, throw home, over that of Goodhart, it's a beauty. Sometimes you do beat it out and it looks so good. I'm not done yet. Russell Dwayne Johnson in a cement mixer. No matter what point of the year it's been, Connor Panis has provided everything. He's been one of the best players in the American Association. All right, welcome today. I'm joined by Connor Panis, former Toronto Blue Jay minor leaguer, San Diego Padre minor leaguer, entering his ninth season in professional baseball. Before this, he was uh, a collegiate player at Canisius, where, you know, I met you at a really young age, I would say high school. I, yeah. I didn't really meet you, but I knew about you. I was coaching the junior national team at the time, and uh, you were with the Toronto Mets. So I, I knew about you, but I didn't really meet you until 2012, 2013, when you were a young collegiate sophomore, I believe, playing summer ball in the inner county league for the Burlington Bandits. Yep. And I remember seeing this kid. I was, that was 2012, so I was 30 at the time. I'm, I'm your age right now. And I remember seeing you and saying, man, this kid could really, really hit. Fast forward, you know, you're doing great, great things. You're heading to Mexico soon to play professionally there, as well as Dubai later in the year. Welcome, officially. Thanks for having me. Yeah, no, uh, I'm super excited because I was a fan of you. Uh, just watching you play, watching your game. I uh, really like kind of like what uh, the game you've kind of brought to the table and then the, also how you've developed because seeing you from high school to the type of player you've become, you know, it just proves what I've been talking about in terms of development. Everybody's stage of development is different and yours isn't different because I think you're starting to kind of fit into that player that you think you're becoming in your 30s now right yeah what, what, what do you think about that like you said I, I feel like I'm hitting my stride right now mm -hmm. I'm in my prime I, I feel like I have a lot of years left in me and with all these opportunities coming about now it's it's really enticing to keep pursuing it and working right. hard and I'm glad I've continued pursuing the dream so yeah so so what's next for you uh on, on the on the schedule so this Friday, I, I head down to Mexico for spring training. Wow. I'm in Veracruz this summer. Really excited because last year and a half, I've really been trying to go down there. Right now in my career, all about experiences. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the Mexican Summer Baseball League is pretty good caliber talent, you know, probably equivalent to around AAA. Right. A lot of ex-big leaguers. Robinson Cano just signed there again. So Oh, so he, Cano's playing there too. Yeah, so he's playing for Mexico right. City. Um, so I'm looking forward to getting down there. You know, I'm on, I'm in a smaller town, but it looks like a nice stadium, great atmosphere, beach town, right. more authentic Mexico. So I, I'm really looking forward to that experience of traveling Mexico, right. still playing high competitive baseball and seeing where it takes me. How long does that season last? Uh, and then when does your season start for, for, uh, baseball United in Dubai? So spring training's a little lengthy down there. It's already started for the younger guys. They reported March 3rd. Um, obviously, I go Friday, and it goes till – spring training goes till April 12th when we open up our, right. our first game of the season. So it's a lengthy spring training, and if you go all the way to the finals, it's about end of August. Right. So lengthy season, really looking forward to it. And then for Dubai, that would start – Ideally, they're aiming November, December. Wow. So talk about Dubai a bit. Baseball United, brand new professional league. Massive, massive backing in terms of MLB experiences. Hall of Famer after Hall of Famer. You got Barry Larkin. You got Robinson Cano. You got Albert Pujols. You got Felix Hernandez. You got Didi Gregorius. Like, this name goes on and on. Um, what's your experience been like? I know last year has been... A really eye-opening experience. You're you're taking in taken in the draft. They had a, a a draft last year, and you were selected, and a couple other Canadians, I think, too, as well. Yep, a few. Rob, uh, Jacob Robson. Robson. Yeah, Robson's a beauty and then too. LP Pelletier. So. Oh, nice. Yeah. So it's good opportunity with uh, fellow Canadians to go down there. What was it like? You know, last year being the inaugural 
you know, uh, part of Baseball United with these big names kind of backing it up. Probably one of the most surreal experiences of my baseball career. Mm -hmm. Brand new league. Dubai is just such an amazing place. But I I was actually a part of Baseball United sort of from the beginning. They contacted me about two years ago. And through my contact, actually one of my coaches at the time, Carlos Mirabel, who pitched in Japan for a while and he's sort of one of the main guys behind the scenes and he said hey you know you got to take a look at Connor Panis and they gave me an opportunity and we finally got over there this year after you know it's a lot of setbacks but to to plan a brand new league in the Middle East isn't easy so yeah they made it happen we did a little showcase over there and it was really cool being surrounded with guys like you said, you know, established big leaguers, future Hall of Famers, and I fit right in there. You know, I performed well and opened some eyes. So I'm really looking forward to having an actual season there next year and seeing where it takes me. Well, last year, last, I think it was October, or was it in October uh, when you guys played the All Star game? October. It yeah. was October. End of October, right? early November. Right. So you, you went off. You, you had a pretty – I guess there's there's a lot riding on, uh, a lot of pressure to for you to, you know, have a good outing. And th- it's only a few games. It's not like you're playing a whole season and you have time to kind of settle in. It's like you got to make a statement. How was that like, um, you know, you hit two home runs or one, one home, run. One home one run. run? The second home run ever in Baseball United history. That's right. Yeah, it, yeah, yeah. It was a good one. It was, it was a no-doubter, so. Yeah, who who is that off of? It was off oh, – I his name but it was a, it he pitched was in Japan he's pitched in Japan for right. like the last eight years right so I was like oh maybe that opens some eyes for <laughs> overseas we'll see what happens but yeah he just I was hey if fastball's coming I'm ambushing and he threw it right there and right I didn't miss it so from from what you've seen so far in because obviously baseball isn't uh the main sport in the Middle East but you know it's it's a growing sport um you got guys like Cash who you know, uh, set up Baseball United the way it was. He sees a future there. Um, you know, you've played in a, I guess, converted cricket field. Like, and I'm sure the atmosphere is different too. It's not like American style baseball where, you know, people are just cheering popcorn or whatever, just casually enjoying a game. There's drums, there's screaming, there's all sorts of things like that. What What was your experience like in, in terms of seeing that from, I guess the perspective of this was a cricket field before and now I'm playing, you know, in a made baseball stadium and it looked great. Yeah. The stadium looked great. They did a really good job to turn that cricket stadium. I, I don't know how many people it fits at least I would say 25 to 30 K maybe even close to four. It's Mm -hmm. a big stadium. And to see how right when we got there, it wasn't fully finished yet. They're putting up the scoreboard. They're making the walls, right? They're, putting in the dirt right because there's so much to change on a cricket field and by the end of it it looked like an MLB caliber stadium you know it almost felt like I was in the Rogers Center right. so it's sort of funny how you say the differences you know over there bat ball sport cricket is so popular Classic. there so baseball can stick over there right. and I think it was a really good int- introduction to the game funny how you say though there are some differences where you know the the pitch where the I guess on cricket where the pitcher throws and they hit right it's so sacred when we would be hitting bp they would have it fenced off and say like don't go really? on this area limit the footsteps on this area because this is the sacred pitch we don't <laughs> wow. want to like spike it up put holes in right. it stuff like that obviously during the, the game whatever happens happens but right it was just unique seeing that and how sacred it was so i guess uh, the closest thing to us baseball guys would be like do, don't touch the mound or don't stay off the foul line, maybe. Yeah. It's like, don't touch the foul line. Almost in that aspect. But wow, they were, that's, that's wild. But they did a great job. Um, there's so much going on in Dubai that for people not really knowing what baseball is, we had a decent turnout, you know, six, I would say roughly around 6,000, right. 6,000, 7,000, which is not bad for a start, you know. So I think it, the game can really grow there. And who knows, maybe one day they're, they're selling out those stadiums. Right. And what was it like? Uh, like, I, I know it was just for uh, like a week and a bit where you're in Dubai. But now this coming November, you know, you're going to be living there uh, for a bit. 
What was it? What was your experience like outside of the baseball side of things? Yeah. So one thing I had, I did get drafted by the Dubai team, the Dubai Wolves. Right. And teammates like Didi, uh, Robinson Cano, you know, they're they're going to wow. be my teammates. So I will be living in Dubai. I'm not sure where yet, but <laughs> everywhere in Dubai it's is beautiful. Just, right? It's beautiful. Yeah. Everything's brand new. You know, there were some parts of the town that had marble sidewalks. Oh, crazy. Um, funny story with that like we don't have it here in toronto but scooters are so big there so like instead of ubering we scootered everywhere just to explore <laughs> and it's not even that yeah. expensive right so one of my teammates um he was scootering and i guess he took a sharp turn and fell off the scooter oh, but shoot. normal normal sidewalk you get destroyed he slid. it was marble <laughs> he slid about 10 feet that's wild <laughs> and didn't get hurt that's wild. so that's just like it's just everything there is top notch and I loved it over there. Right. I'm just itching to go back. So, so from There's so much to do from a baseball perspective, what would you say? Like, I know it was only nine days. You, you hit the home run second all time, uh, home run in, in baseball United. You've also, you know, there, I, I remember that collision play with Didi here and you know, exposing all this talent. I got, I got, Oh, in a collision out. You're mic'd up at the time. That was pretty rad as well. I was hurting after a while. Oh, you guys. That. I was, I thought. You guys hit each other pretty hard. Yeah, but well, you said earlier, the drums playing. Yeah. It's so loud. Even though mm. there were only, you know, six, 7,000 people there, so loud. So you hear on the mic'd up <laughs> collision. I was, it's funny because, so that was right after I hit the home run. So they wanted to mic me up talking about. Oh, you know, no way. So you hear me calling for it, but you just can't hear me. Right. right? So it's. I mean, especially, it was a funny situation. We were both okay, laughed it off. It is what it is. It happens, right? So, but it was, it was, it was pretty funny. You've played in Australia. You've played uh, all across the world. Um, you played in the U.S. independent leagues, affiliated ball. You know what? What's your mindset like, and what are you looking most forward to uh, in in this upcoming season in Dubai specifically? I always enjoy how the base the game of baseball takes you all around the world mm. like you said i've i've played everywhere all over the states canada sure but you know korea japan with baseball canada a uh, bunch of winter ball leagues in colombia right. australia like you said and now dubai so it i'm just really excited to get over there playing a full winter ball league and just one thing that's really um not talked about is how great the group of guys was there everyone every player everyone in the management side was just top-notch great person mm -hmm. everyone was just nice to be around and it was just such a great atmosphere so I'm just really looking forward to seeing everyone again building off it and having an actual schedule of a season so right and uh what are your um I guess goals for this upcoming season what what's your expectations because for me I love seeing this because as a former minor league baseball player myself, you know, um, our options basically were very limited in terms of it's either you play minor league ball, you have some options in independent baseball uh, in the U.S., but now you're seeing, I guess, more options to play professionally, get paid, make a living, play in front of a crowd, but it's a totally different culture. What's your expectations uh, in terms of, performance wise what are you what are you some of the goals that you know you have because you know you could play you've pl you proved that you've played at every level and you've uh, created success in every level and I'm sure you learn with a lot of failure as well so what tie that all in into kind of like what your goals are uh, as I guess a 30 30 year old um, adult now you're no longer uh, you know 20 years old um, where I see you as, you know, you're, you're in your prime. You're ready to show now, yeah. and uh, your stats show that. Mentally, I, from early years of minor league baseball, where you know how it was, every day is, I got a performer. I might not play for a week. Mm -hmm. So having that mindset throughout the minors, it, it's tough, you know, like not being a top-notch prospect but still performing. Man, there were some days I'd hit a home run and not play a few days. So right, it's it, tough. It was really mentally draining. And then now I can confidently say I'm at peace where, you know, 
I am not worrying about those things. I'm just being me every day, no matter what happens. And I'm seeing the results and it's, I'm in my prime. I feel great. I'm trying to build off last year, which was one of probably my best professional years. And, you know, I, I am confident to say, you know, I, I, what, I can do that again this year and keep right. on building and who knows where it takes me. Obviously the dream is to make it to the MLB. I got so close being in AAA and right. it's still not done. You know, yeah. I produced this year. Maybe there's a spot somewhere in AAA for me where I can get a shot and show the caliber of player I am now that I can contribute to a major league team. Or, you know, okay, if it doesn't happen opportunity-wise, maybe I go overseas to Korea, Japan, yeah. Taiwan. Another For experience sure. that would be amazing. And like you said, I already have winter ball lined up with Dubai. So just continuing to be me. One thing I've always been proud of my career is I don't think anyone's going to outwork me when I'm at the mm -hmm. field, you know, always getting live reps. One thing I'm proud about, though, is I'll never take a playoff. I always run hard, mm. and I think that really gets noticed in the long run. Even, you know, little ground ball, I'm always going to run hard because right. you never know. Sometimes yeah, you do sure. beat it out, Absolutely. and it looks so good. So I'm just – I'm that kind of player, and it's, it's paying off now, and I'm just excited to keep on building, and I'm not done yet. So No, I, I love that mindset. People don't realize how important that is to – you know, you just play the game hard, good things will happen. The moment you check out, the moment you don't, baseball will always, always expose you. Yes. And that's one thing that I've learned throughout the game. That's is why you respect the game, play the game the right way. And I, I love that you're taking that approach. Let's switch gears. Um, uh, did a little research, and I didn't realize this. Um, you were on the Lansing Lug Lugnuts 2016. So this is yep. your... I guess it was my Midwest first league. full pro season. Yeah, Midwest League, right? Yep. Um, with the Toronto Blue Jays, and every year there's something called the Crosstown Showdown in Michigan, and it's where the Lansing Lugnuts uh, square off with, uh, I guess, in city uh, baseball, Michigan State. Yep. And they pack the house, like 8,500 people in the fall, I believe. Uh, yeah. That's when you guys played. It was supposed to be that year, beginning of our season, but just because how bad the weather is. Right. That part of the country. Yeah, yeah. Uh, gets, during the beginning good. of the season, yeah. they, they pushed it back to Makes sense. right when we were done the season. So right. mid-September. And why I bring that story up is because uh, you participated in the home run derby there. But I, we pulled this picture off, I think it was Twitter, or formerly Twitter. X, and it's uh, a picture of you in the middle. Yep. And to your right, you had a 17-year-old Vladimir Guerrero Jr. and then an 18-year-old Bo Bichette. At the time, they're in rookie ball. They just signed with the Jays, and here you are in the home run derby with them in Lansing. Tell us about that. That was a very unique experience. So we had three hitters from our team: myself, Vladdy, and Bo, and then three hitters from Michigan State. So right. we all took part in a home run derby. John Schneider threw to us. Oh, nice. Um, and, you know, they put on a show. But in the end, I, I did win the home run derby. Oh, nice. And I, I guess that's a little bragging rights earlier on in the <laughs> yeah, career. Yeah, Vladdy Guerrero in a home run every, derby. Every time now I see John Schneider throw Vladdy to <laughs> him in the MLB home run derby, I'm like, I don't know. If I had John Schneider, maybe, maybe I might win that thing. So That's wild. But yeah, I, I, they gave me like a little trophy to have it at home. It's just, it's a cool experience to look back on. And yeah, I know exactly the photo you're talking about. And right. They're now, look at them, established big leaguers. Crazy. Who I played with through the minors for two, three years, right? right. High A, double A, we, we won two championships in a row. Right. So um, it was unique being alongside them through my minor league uh, career. How is uh, John Schneider's VP? Yeah, money. pretty good. If He's I had him, if I had him in any home run derby, I think I could win. Oh, nice, nice. Anywhere. Well, you, you you've also participated in. Uh, you won another home run derby last year. So last year I took part in the American Association home run derby, right. and I finished in second, missed it by oh, one no home way. run. So you were yeah. at the finals on that. Yeah, but I didn't get to bring my own BP thrower. So oh, you're just stuck with whatever. They yeah, had. and uh, so quickly, what's what's the key to to uh, winning a home run derby? Being your consistency, you know, you get tired eventually, right. but just my swing plays with it. You know, I, I, I can go all fields, but obviously home run, you're just 
pole side. So right. just getting in that rhythm. No oppo get, bombs. <laughs> not in the home run derby. Not in the home run derby. <laughs> I get a few a year, but yeah, not, yeah, not yeah. in the home run derby, especially where the place was. It, it didn't really carry to the center. So you really just had to strategize, hey, I got to right. I gotta hit it right center and over. So Do you, do you feel like – that affects your swing game swing at all or approach you're able to separate the two i don't think so that's yeah. just like the major conception of oh you know base hitters should not play golf right i love golf <laughs> every off day i get during the season i'm out on the course right right <laughs> play yeah, nice. and it does not because I, where i'm at in my career you know I can break down my swing right, you know compared what, to my golf yeah, swing, exactly. and it, it doesn't affect it. It gives me a little better <laughs> launch angle, right? <laughs> so, no. no I, I, yeah, I, I, it doesn't affect you, honestly. I, I didn't find it. Yeah, no, that's wild. Like, just hearing that story, going back to the Bow Vlad, when I seen that picture, I, I just, I'm just like, wow, man, these guys are studs, yeah. you know, playing in the show. But that just proves that – you know, that's the type of player you are. You're once, you know, with, with those guys that are, you know, successful at the highest level in the world. And it's that confidence that you instill within yourself saying, you know what, I believe in my ability, you know, um, even though my situation is different, there's other opportunities like Baseball United, like Mexico, and who knows where those opportunities bring to. So for me, you know, seeing that uh, is, is such a um, – a crazy thing um even within yourself the confidence that it gives you right and kind of like a, a message to kind of like that future generation saying you know what you you always have to uh work hard and take advantage of the opportunities that come by you because you can't really control everything else right exactly no i i totally agree with you i i've had a lot of people in my career just message me you know they see what i'm doing and still playing and having the success I am and guys I've played with in the minors are like saying, you know what, like good for you. Like I wish I stuck it out a few more years and it just makes me feel good that, you know, this, this grind of trying to continue this baseball career is it's just, it's recognized in other people's eyes. And, you know, I'm proud of myself for continuing to, to do this. So, right. so, uh, last question before we wrap up, what's, uh, what would you say to date your your most memorable baseball experience uh, to date? Because you, you played college baseball, you played pro baseball, you've played a lot of baseball around the world. What has been kind of like that one that sticks out uh, to you? Um, it, I would, there's a few. Baseball United's a new experience, but it, it's something really special that I'm looking forward to building with. I would also say winning back-to-back -back championships in the minor leagues. Right. High A and double A, that's not easy. Some some players don't even make the playoffs their whole career. And I got the opportunity to be a part of – a big part of two back-to-back -back championships. But I would say there's just all – you know, over, the, over your career, you get so many unique stories. And one really cool experience that I would say stands out to me was when I was in high A, Dunedin, that's where all the Blue Jays, MLB players rehab. And so when I was down there, we at the same time had Jay Happ – Josh Donaldson, and Troy Tutlowitzki. Mm -hmm. So just getting the experience to learn from those guys for, you know, they were there for like two weeks, pick their brains, stuff like that, was a very unique experience. But I'll go into more detail where at the time um, I was struggling a little. You know, you go through those ups and downs. Mm -hmm. And the weekend before, John Schneider was my manager throughout every four years I was with the Blue Jays. So he went up, I went up right together oh, until i got awesome. traded yeah, yeah yeah he let me wear his pants i'm a pan up guy <laughs> he let me wear his pants that weekend you know he's a bigger guy baggy pants and i went like seven for 11 oh, great boy. weekend You're keeping those pants <laughs> the day after we're in the bp huddle and i'm like i can't wear these pants i look so stupid and troy tutlowitzki's first day and he's like i've seen your batting average you better wear those pants <laughs> troy tutlowitzki after BP, we're in the, you know, you, how you have pregame spread. Yeah. We're in the buffet line. I'm getting food. He's to the left of me. And he's like, I don't know what's going to get to 250 first, your weight or your batting average. <laughs> so just like potential future oh, Hall of Famer, established so big leaguer, Troy, to let him know, chirp. like just chirping me, giving me a good time, you know. Yeah. And I kid you not, 
he gets healthier. He goes back to the big league team. And as soon as I hit 250 and I'm starting to really pick it up. The average, right? Not the weight, right? No. <laughs> the batting. I'm never at 250. Come on. Right, just, just, me. just putting that clear. <laughs> as soon as I get to 250 batting average, and high A was actually my best year where I ended up hitting 280 with 21 home runs. But I got a text from Troy Titlowitzki saying, I'll never forget it. It saved in my phone. Hey, you fat fuck. Your batting average is higher than mine. So for a guy like Troy Titlowitzki to, you know, he got my number from the big league clubby who knew me. And for him to reach out and just care about a minor leaguer guy in high A, that was just really special. So, like, it just shows you, like, there are some really nice big leaguers out there that, do care and right. give back so that's probably one of the that's funnier wild. cooler no, stories like, that i've had a stud. yeah like, so this I, guy i've always time. respected him and right. i thank him for you know giving me that experience so no that's that's awesome yeah. awesome story but uh you know i going back to dubai and wrapping this up we're looking forward because we want to kind of do some content within yep. you know uh before you start in dubai so we're going to try to get over there you know, get some footage of you uh, preparing for all this uh, as well. So we're looking forward to that. And, you know, I appreciate you spending time. I know you're busy, schedule's busy, you're getting amped up uh, to start the season. So I appreciate you taking the time uh, for this podcast. And, you know, we're here at Apple Taco, huge fan of, of you. We're rooting for you. And we wish you all the best uh, in this upcoming season. I really appreciate that. And thanks for having me. Anytime. Awesome.